Okay, so in the beginning of this discussion when we started about supports, what we did was uh, given T on omega, we defined T restricted to omega not where omega naught was contained. So, this is localizing the distribution to a smaller open set. Now, we want to do the reverse process. So, now if uh, omega is the union of omega i, i in i, okay, and uh, given T in D omega i, so can we patch these together to get T in D prime omega such that T restricted to omega i is T i. So, given T i in D of omega i, can we patch these together to get T in D prime omega such that T restrict omega i is T i. So, we want to stitch up all those things together. So, we have the following theorem for that. So, under what condition can we do this? Okay. So, let omega in R n be open and omega i equals union i in i omega i omega i open subsets of omega for every i ok let t i belong to d of omega d prime of omega i such that whenever omega i intersection omega j is non-empty, we have T i restrict to omega i intersection omega j is the same as T j restricted to omega i intersection omega j. This is a very natural condition to have. So, you want to patch them up to form a global distribution and so therefore, you should not assess that the restriction is the same uh, as the T i's. So, you, you should be able to, they, you should not have a discrepancy when the when the two uh, two open sets overlap and therefore you need the T i restricted to omega i intersection omega j is the same as T j restricted to omega i intersection omega j. Then there exists a unique T in D prime of omega such that T restricted to omega i equals T i for all i. So, let as usual we take psi i, i in i locally finite C infinity partition of unity subordinate to omega i, i in i. So, we know what this means. The support of psi i will be in omega i. So, support psi i will be contained in omega i and then 0 less than or equal to psi i will be less than or equal to 1 and then support psi i is a locally finite family and then sigma psi i is identically 1. Okay, So, these are the four conditions which we have uh, for these uh, functions. Okay. So, let phi belong to d omega. So, we saw this earlier as we saw earlier support of phi being compact will intersect only finitely many support of psi i's. Why? Because each point 
in the support of phi will have a neighborhood which intersects only finitely many one of them. These neighborhoods cover support of phi which is compact. So, support of phi can be covered by a compact a finite number of neighborhoods each of which will intersect only a finite number of the support of the psi i's and therefore totally the support of phi itself will intersect only a finitely many. Now, this is something which we already used. Okay, so thus phi psi i will be non-zero for only finitely many i. So, T phi equal to summation definition, this is the definition of this, I am going to define i in i of T i of phi psi i is well defined. Why? Because you have the support of phi psi i is contained in the support of psi i which will be contained in omega i and therefore phi psi i belongs to d of omega i because it is a product of 2 c infinity functions support is contained in omega i. So, T i phi psi i makes sense for every i and this will be non-zero only if uh, for finitely many i because psi phi i itself will be non-zero only for a finitely many number of i and therefore this is a well defined expression. Okay. <coughs> so, this is only a finite sum. So, now you take phi n tilde going to 0 in d omega. So, that means what? To support a phi n tilde are all contained in a fixed compact set k, k fixed compact set. And inside that everything goes to 0 uniformly. So then again because this is a compact set these are only going to intersect so then so then k then there exists finitely many indices i1 to ik such that k intersection support of psi i ok and k intersection support of psi i equal to empty set for all other i. Now, the, but phi n tilde psi i j has to go to 0 in d of omega i j for all 1 less than equal to j less than equal to j. This is standard now you are multiplying by fixed c infinity function this goes to 0 in d omega and therefore this we have seen this many times ok. Ok and therefore since each one which is non-zero will go to zero and uh, and consequently you have the t of phi n tilde goes to zero. Therefore, t is a distribution. Okay, so now claim t restricted to omega i equals so, that is the only one which we need to check. So, let phi belong to d of 
omega i. So what we have to show, we have to show Tfi is the same as Tifi. Okay. So if j in i such that omega i intersection omega j is non-empty, then phi psi j belongs to d of omega i intersection omega j because this has compact support and it is contained in both these sets. Okay? So, this has to be this uh, uh, in this set okay? and therefore, we have T i of phi psi j is the same as T j of phi psi j by hypothesis. So, this implies that T of phi how did we define it? This is sigma over all i, uh, all j in i, such that omega i intersection omega j is non-empty, not equal to empty set. Okay, only then phi it will, uh, so that will be T j times phi psi j, but this is equal to sigma over j omega i intersection omega j not equal to empty set, T j of phi psi j is same as T i of phi psi j. So, that is equal to T i acting on sigma over j omega j intersection omega i non empty of phi psi j and that is equal to T i of because psi j is a partition of unity. And because this, why did this come out of the summation? Because this is essentially only a finite sum and because the support of phi will intersect only a finitely man, man, num, many, num, many of the supports of the psi j's and therefore, this is essentially a finite sum. So, it comes out and consequently you have this and we have completed. So, uniqueness is obvious. Because if you want t to be equal to ti uh, on the subdomain, you have to define it only this way. You cannot define it by any other method. Okay. So, so, now let omega contained in Rn be an open set. and t in d prime of omega. So, if there exists an f which is in c infinity of omega such that t equals t f, then we say t is c infinity on omega. Now, you can do it for any subdomains also. Therefore, so if you have omega equal to union of omega i, such that t equal to uh, t is c infinity on omega i. So, then that means it is given by a C infinity function, then automatically the function will have to coincide on the intersections and therefore, this implies by the above theorem T is C infinity on omega by theorem. And consequently, we can talk of the largest open set where the function is C infinity. So, that leads us to the following definition. omega in R n is an open set t in d prime of omega, then the singular support of t so you write sing sub t is the complement of the 
largest open set where T is C infinity. Okay, so you take wherever T is C infinity open set, then you put them all together. Ob obviously, they will patch up because they are now made up of functions and uh, which are C infinity. So, they are C infinity on the intersection as well. So, Fi will have to be equal to Fj. And then by the previous theorem, you can make T uh, through the for the whole domain and that will give you the function which will functions will also patch up and so you will have that this thing. So, obviously, singular support of T is contained in the support of T because on the complement of support of T, T is 0 and that is automatically a C infinity function. So, therefore, the singular support will always be contained in the support of T. Okay. So, for the Dirac distribution and its derivatives etc., the support itself is the origin. So, the singular support is also the origin because uh, the outside everything is zero. Okay.